Hello race fans and welcome to round six of the World Touring Car Series live here from the Nürburgring in Germany. We have reached the midway point of the season and Kieran Harrison has taken a strong hold of this third season of the World Touring Car Series. However, our championship leader is not here tonight. So could we see the order change up here at the Nürburgring? Joining me as always in the commentary box is Paul Smith. Paul, very warm welcome. What can we expect tonight? Uh, I think we're going to have uh, a little bit of a mix-up of uh, the standings, although, uh, according to Guinness, we know how strong he is in that Tim RC outfit, so don't write him off. Nathan Mess has been a little bit hit and miss um, recently, so he'll be hoping for a good result as well from that team. But Pure Sims, you know, what can they do? Ross McFarlane, he needs to kickstart his championship fight, and to get a good result here this week would be really, really good. Yeah, definitely would. He comes into this round 183 points in arrear, so a big opportunity tonight to close that gap down. But we have had a superb calendar of action so far for you here in the World Touring Car Series on Racebot TV. We went through our European swing, Red Bull, Hockenheim Ring, Monza, and then over stateside to the Canadian Tire Motorsport Park in Canada and Sebring International Raceway in Florida. Today, we go to the Nürburgring Grand Prix circuit, an interesting technical circuit which should provide really good touring car racing. In a couple of weeks' time, after a little break, we go to the Suzuka circuit in Japan, then to Interlagos, Watkins Glen, Magne Coeur, and Knock Hill, and Silverstone National to close off our 12 round season at the end of April. This is how they look in the standings at the moment. Kieran Harrison confirming his dominant start to the season, 1,015 points on the board in just five rounds. He has been consistent and rapid as well. Ross McFarland sits in second ahead of the recovering Corentin Guinness, who's really brought himself back into the championship conversation over the last couple of rounds. Esteban Rodriguez for Pure Sims Esports sits in fourth and David Baker makes it three Pure Sims cars in the top five. Miguel Freitas, Norbert Leitner, Nathan Ames, Shilard Naji and Yaroslav Stebula round out the top 10. In the AM class, well, it's been all about Dan Martin and RD Simsport, who hold a pretty strong lead over Craig Williams in the sole Audi RS3 in the field. Stuart Bickley sits in third, with Ryan Hamilton in fourth and Damon Mulqueen in fifth place. Mike Pollard sits in sixth, followed by Richard Simner, Harry Fox, Andreas Gilman and Scott Malcolm sneaking into the top ten. In the team standings, well, it's Sim RC who lead the way, much to the delight of Kieran Harrison and Corentin Guinness after their strong start to the season. Pure Sims sit in second, with Impulse Racing in third, Geodesic in fourth, and Semper Racing rounding out the top five. Pure Sims Sim Lab outfit sit in sixth, RD Simsport in seventh, the Foreign Note podcast by Geodesic in eighth, CSS Urano in ninth, and Impulse Racing Sim Racing cockpit. They round the top 10. In the Pro-Am standings, well, it's the way of Prestanda Nomad, but just by six points from DCW Racing, one of the emerging crews in the World Touring Car Series. And nice and easy to spot their cars out on track, bright blue and yellow as well. Now we have three different cars here in the World Touring Car Series, in fact four, excuse me. We have two Hyundais, we have an Audi, and we have the Honda Civic Type R. But so far this season, Paul, these Hyundai Elantras have been absolutely dominant. They certainly have, and the yeah, the Elantra has very much been the favourite car of the drivers out there. They, they enjoy the long wheelbase nature of this car. It's really um, nice and stable over curbs, which could be key around a couple of places around here, especially through the Schumacher S, you want to ride those curbs, and the uh, the, the uh, Vidal Chicane at the end of the lap as well. So uh, that's a place where you're going to feel the benefit of that longer wheelbase car. Um, but the Veloster, uh, the Honda and the Audi though, they can have their day out there. Uh, in fact, I don't see any Hondas out there today, so that means that Jake Blackhall and a couple others are not taking part. 
And Jake Blackhall had such a good showing last time out as well in the 3M Honda. So hopefully we'll see him back at Suzuka in a couple of weeks' time. Your and Championship leader Dan Martin comes to the line for his final run in qualifying. The moment is Ross McFarlane on pole position, taking full advantage of Kieran Harrison's absence to out-qualify Harrison's teammate Quentin Guinez. So this sets the grid order for race one, but we have three sprint races for you tonight, 20 minutes in length each, and with a reverse grid for reverse for uh, race two and three, decided by a spinning wheel to decide how many cars we reverse. As Mike Pollard takes a pedestrian close to his qualifying session. Up to the line comes number six, David Baker, 11th at the moment. Can he get into the top 10 with one last dash for the line? Over the line he goes, no, stays 11th. So David Baker will start from the sixth row of the grid in the number six Pure Sims Hyundai Elantra. Tell you what, Paul, that is some performance from Ross McFarlane, exactly what he needed to do. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's step one of uh, tonight's um, action for him, is get pole position. Step two will be to try and win race number one of the evening and then just try and get as best result that he can through the remaining two races that we have after this one that we've got coming up here. So yeah, Ross will be delighted with that position. I'm sure he will. So this is how they line up for the first race of the day here in the World Touring Car Series. 45 cars ready to pile down into one of the tightest opening corners anywhere in Europe. In fact, make it anywhere in the world. Ross McFarlane and Quentin Guinness make an all-star front row of the grid with Norbert Leitner and Nathan Amish right behind ready to make their impression. Wojciech Savidovic and Miguel Freitas roll out row three. Then it's Terry Flatten and Sam Blaze with Szilard Nagy and Jack Cedric rounding out the top 10. Then it's David Baker and El Neil. Row 7 is Orison Herford and Esteban Rodriguez with Yaroslav Sebula and Slavomir Jorski rounding out row 8. Then it's James Holman and Niklas Laubisch. Pete Newman and Dan Martin round out your top 20 with Andreas Gilman, Richard Simner, Jamie Rushworth and James Parker rounding out the first 12 rows. Then it's Mike Pollard, Ryan Hamilton, Craig Williams, Stuart Beckley, Hackenask and Damon Mulqueen. 31st is Harry Fox in the Hyundai Veloster with Patrick Faulkner also in a Veloster in 32nd. Then it's Chris Chariton, Sam Smith, Rob Sulland and Alan McCain. Scott Malcolm rolls off from 37th, followed by Neil Stevenson, Nathan Davies, setting the last time. Then the following with qualifying vans, Spencer McCarthy, Stephen Walker, Nick Clibbins, Ben Gregory, Neil Rocks and Tom Stanley. So a few drivers having to sit on the naughty step in qualifying. And they will start from the very back of the pack. Almost ready to go racing here. 26 degrees Celsius on the track, about perfect, Paul. Yeah, not too bad for the drivers out there. They'll get to uh, enjoy those conditions. And uh, yeah, we should be in for a cracking race here in this one. Look out for the uh, arena section. That's where going to be uh, some big, big moves made here in the opening lap. Yeah, no doubt about that. So Ross McFarlane waiting patiently on the grid. The revs begin to be engaged, ready to let loose for 20 minutes of racing here at the Nürburgring. Who will be king of the ring tonight here in the World Touring Car Series? Off they go for the first time. And Ross McFarley immediately goes to the inside to cover that line down into the first corner in that Pure Sims Hyundai Elantra. And already there's a big move there from Norbert Leitner for impulse racing to get some bit physical with Quentin Guinez as well. Guinez teammates Ames there on the very outside. But the result of that is that Ross McFarlane's got a great getaway. Three or four car lengths immediately. Yeah, that was almost perfect for Ross, wasn't it? And uh, Leitner, well, he's a respecter of no egos, that's for sure. He was getting stuck in there into turn number one, but not able to go. Flash of the headlights as well. Uh, we all know what that means. It means get out of my way. I want to come through, but uh, Leitner not finding any space. And uh, if uh, Guinez is clever about this, he'll be to try to just pull away and get back towards Ross McFarlane. Oh, bit of a mistake there for Norbert Leitner. Just sticks a wheel in the grass and loses a vital bit of traction. 
And he's got Nathan Ames in the Sim RC car, the yellow and black Sim RC car. Nathan Ames with the purple flashes. Corinton Guinness with the green flashes and mirror caps. And Lightner in there in the sandwich as well. It's a big move there from the 58 of Pete Newman for Pure Sim Sim Lab. He can move on one of the geodesic cars uh, who have certainly made their presence known in the field as well. Nick Clibbins is straight on the flash out as well, going in there side by side alongside Ben Gregory. The reigning AM class champion. Not quite been his season. He was involved in a huge pileup last week at Sebring, hence the uh, qualifying ban. Stewart's deeming him at fault for that. So he's got a, a, a night to try and just get some strong points on the board, Paul. Yeah, these, <laughs> these points uh, really does uh, bend. There was some tyre smoke on the exit of uh, the. Uh, the uh, Michelin curve into Varstein, there's a car off in the background there, and it's David Baker. Baker's off at the Vidal chicane. Well, that's um, suboptimal, is what we like to say, and uh, I don't know whether he was helped or whether it was the curbs that assisted him off. Well, we'll try and get a look at it as if we can. There's Jack Sedgwick having a look down the inside here in the Hyundai Veloster for Craig setup shot. Big lunge on the brakes, get, almost gets into the rear of Nathan Ames. Does he get the move done then on... Does he get the move done on El Neal? Yes, he does. So Ames has dropped quite a few positions. Now, uh, if he's dropped four or five positions. I wonder if he was involved in that little skirmish there with David Baker. Yeah, possibly, potentially, there's an a, a, a impulse car going a little bit slow. Here we go, this is MS and Baker, and it's just that side-to-side -side contact. Opening lap, cold tyres, especially at the rear, and Baker heads all the way to the wall. Down the inside, well, there's action of plenty everywhere. Where do we look in all of this? Well, we're looking at Holman battling away with Sebula behind uh, El Neal, and we've got uh, MS looking to the inside, late lunge there on uh, Najee and gets the job done. Great move, yeah, really nice move from Nathan Ames there, getting the job done. A little bit of clean air now as well, going to try and push on you. We know he's got great pace, but in seventh position will not be where he wants to end up. He dropped down to eighth in the championship after missing last week, did Nathan Ames, so a little bit of catch up to do. But with his teammate here in Harrison, the championship leader not here, he does have an opportunity to do that. I can ask right there in the absolute melee. It, oh, the car off there at the chicane. And it manages to rejoin. But Richard Simner in the AM class, car number 42 and 14th. He had a great night at Seabrick a week ago. Three wins from three in the AM class. He's leading again mounting a real comeback but I love this celebration procedure as well Paul he got stuck into the to the bullet bourbon when he when he got out of the car last Thursday yeah he was certainly happy with that uh, the DCW racing though won't be happy with that with Stuart Bickley losing places obviously slow down penalties a geodesic car in the gravel trap around at the last corner as well so all sorts of shenanigans and uh, things happening out there here in the early stages of this race one thing worth pointing out is that Guinness did catch up to uh, Ross McFarlane but they're about to go three wide into turn one, that never goes well uh, no, no it's uh, it's certainly busy down oh. there as one of the pure sims car, that's uh, Rodriguez I think trying to make his way back up to speed now the gap at the front of the field that gap that McFarlane had early on it's more or less evaporated Guinness has yeah there it is it has evaporated Guinness has run down McFarlane and we have got a race on at the front of the pack and Norbert Leitner isn't far behind either oh there's a little bit of uh, what's the opposite of coexistence that was not <laughs> coexistence there and that was the car 216 one of the impulse cars and, and Rodriguez was just the wrong place at the wrong time, wasn't he? Coming through turn number one, head, getting head on with El Neal. So uh, Neal's taking a trip back to the pits with all of that. But uh, uh, that's it. Yeah, you, it's a corner that's got a, a few different lines through there at turn number one. The problem is if you're you're too wide and you're on the inside and suddenly you're faced with a car facing you, well, there's nowhere to go for Rodriguez. And we saw the result of that. Yeah, it's a notorious corner. Uh, we saw, of course, the 
World Touring Car Series uh, finale here last season, and it really was a, a, a an explosive finale. And that that turn one, very, very, uh, very, very notorious for action. It's oh, a contact between Yaroslav Sepula and James Holman there for RD Sim Sport. Ah, oh, that's unfortunate. It seemed like a pretty light contact if anything with with big consequences back to the front then we've got a three car breakaway McFarlane, Guinness, Leitner and who's going to come out on top here it looks like Guinness has got pretty strong pace underneath that SimRC machine that of course running the number one board as our defending champion came so close to winning the championship in season one set that right in season two and he's up definitely on the fight back here. He's not out of it, Paul, but he needs a mighty second half of the season. He does need a mighty second half of the season. As Nick Clemens found out what happens when you uh, get your line wrong through the uh, Vidal chicane up over the curb, and uh, and that sent the back end around and uh, served a slow down penalty and got back on track. But yeah, these three at the front are, are doing a, a sterling job of breaking away. It's great to see Leitner challenging up at the front here i think he's got caught out in a few different incidents throughout the season so far but it's good to see him up there at the front he, he's not he, he's pretty much matching them pace for pace in terms of lap time in fact the other driver out of this top three who've actually set a valid lap time is ross mcfarlane and that was on that last lap everyone else has invalidated lap somewhere yeah, there's a lot of them here. The drivers have got to be careful not to go over their incident point limit. Uh, they get uh, 17 incident points for each race. Um, so you do not want to go over that. What You get one point for breaking the track limits, two for a spin, and four for heavy contact with another car. So uh, you want to make sure that you're on top of that. Maybe you get a bonus one, 18 incident points, I'm reliably informed. Thanks, I'm glad somebody's on the ball tonight uh, as well. Um, Nathan Ames continues to try and forge his way back through the field, and he has done. He gets a move, makes it look easy there on Terrier Flatten. I'm sure it was not. It's Flatten actually is going to kind of try and get the cut back here into the final corner. No, not quite. Nathan Ames seals the deal. I was going to say, it's, it's Flatten ahead, isn't it? Sam Blaze has just got past. Um, on that one in the uh, in the white geodesic car um, but yeah the geodesic cars they're out of the same awning as we say so yeah, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's I mean, fine, they are but... black and white different Paul you're being kind <laughs> <laughs> you're but, kind. but uh, a mess now he'll, he'll be trying to get the hammer down and try to catch up to Flatten and to Savinovic, who are fifth and fourth places respectfully. And here comes Guinness. Yeah, Guinness getting a great run here as they head down the hill. And McFarland just trying to hold on, but Guinness, I think, is going to get it on the switch back. There's a right hander coming up, and Guinness has got that strong inside line as well. Nightler's, Norbert Leitner's going to come through and try and pick a piece of the prize away. And McFarlane trying to get on the gas early, but this is going to be mighty tight as they head down into the very tight hairpin here. Right hand hairpin, hard on the brakes then, goes Corentin Guinness and just seals the deal. Yep, he gets it done in time for the run up the hill to the Michael Schumacher S. Norbert Leitner is right there on the bootleg of Ross McFarlane as well. So Corentin Guinness goes to the front of the race, our defending champion. But like you said, Paul, Norbert Leitner in third there. He's only 57 points behind uh, Guinness in the championship. And that's fun. You get 75 for a win. So he's right in this hunt for the championship also. What watch for Ross to try and come back almost immediately? Because he knows that if Guinness gets half a chance, he'll, he'll try and run away from these two. Um, Leitner, I think, was in half a mind as to which way he was going to go down into the, uh, the hairpin and therefore just decided, well, I'll sit behind both of them and wasn't able to take advantage of the hole that Guinness had made um, on Ross McFarlane. So McFarlane, look for him to make a move into the Mercedes arena here. This, he, he needs to get this done and get it done sharpish and then defend for his life. Yeah, he's going to have a go then as well. Right in on the bootleg, he's going to go around the outside for the very tight turn one, but that would theoretically given the inside for the arena but no Guinness has seen that one before closes the door perfectly there does the rapid Frenchman 
and closes it up, is it up nicely. So Guinness holds on to the lead nine minutes to go. We're just gone past half race distance. And McFarlane, he's going to also have to think about watching Savidovich, the old stager there. Car number 80, he's just slowly but surely began to appear larger in the mirror. There he is. And just that little bit of trading position was enough to bring Savidovich into the fray here. Yeah, last lap he was a full second faster than Norbert Leitner was at Savinovich. So, uh, as you say, that little bit of side-by-side uh, -side action slowed each other down. And that's allowed uh, Wojciech to catch up. Uh, I, I would like to give a little mention as well. The man who had a really good week last week, what's carrying on his form, Richard Simner. 12th place, he best placed down. He is, yeah, but I tell you what, Dan Martin is on the charge. He took three tenths of a second out two laps ago, and on that last lap, took up another four tenths of a second. So Dan Martin, he's been really the master of the AM class so far this season, but Richard Simner threatening to take that crown away. He's got a lot of championship points to catch up. He's over 180 points behind in the championship chase for the AM crown, but Simner... With every win that he gets, he'll just be keep ratcheting up that pressure on Dan Martin, who's had such a consistent season. So impressive as they head into the final chicane. Super quick through there. And if you were going to the north, I thought you'd turn left here, but no, we're going to turn right through what I think is now evocatively known as the Hyundai N, <laughs> Hyundai N corner, uh, quite fittingly. Yes, very fittingly. It used to be Coca-Cola Curve, of course, didn't it? But, uh, yeah, new sponsorship uh, means a so name change. So it's not change. actually always Coca-Cola. It turns out there is a limit on these things. Yeah, absolutely. How Basically, how long that American company decides to pay its bills. Uh, Patrick Faulkner, oh, got oh. ceremoniously dumped into the uh, the Armco barrier there, looked like by um, Rodriguez. Uh, who's a little bit further down. So, uh, yeah, that was uh, a, a difference of breaking places down at the hairpin, and that caught um, him out, and he's ended up into the wall. Yeah, he certainly, that's, I think they call it the stock car business. They call it getting dumped, and that was pretty pretty, uh, pretty cut and shut dumping there. Um, so Paddy Faulkner, yeah, out of the, out of the running. So Guinness hanging on then from Ross McFarlane with Norbert Leitner just waiting to pick up any kind of scraps that might come his way. He's running the pace of these leaders, just trying to be tactical, trying to pick where might be the best place to pounce. Will he ask or will he wait for Ross McFarlane to just prise open that gap and try and make the move? We shall see. And all the while, Wojciech Savinovic gets closer and closer and closer. Yeah, don't write him out. He uh, he's having a, a a bit of a a, a a resurgence in form. I think is the phrase that they like to use. And uh, yeah, he certainly has picked up the pace as Wojciech, and he'll be uh, trying to get to that front three, get himself a nice podium in race number one. But uh, one person who isn't happy with his position on the podium right now is Ross McFarlane. I just get the feeling that he's just actually holding back a little bit he, he is getting runs through towards the Vidal chicane it just appears like he's just hanging back just that little bit maybe just pre preserving those front tires just a little bit to then push on into this the final five minutes of the race yeah i think you know that ross mcfarlane is so tactical he's always got such a measured approach to his racing and it's been so effective over the years so many World GT Championships. The, of course, the season one winner of the World Touring Car Series as well. He's a, a proper superstar of this World Sim Racing paddock where we have all the action here on Racebot TV. World GT on a Monday night and World Touring Car Series on a Thursday. And I, I for one, I'm very excited for the addition of, uh, of our new championship coming up as well, Paul. Yeah, the, uh, the Toyota GR86, isn't it, that's uh, going to be coming up as well. So, uh, yeah, a lot of people looking forward to that. And uh, not quite as fast a lap times as you get in these cars, but uh, really fun cars. Ryan Hamilton is not having uh, too much fun out there. He's oh, actually he's getting two places and he's uh, getting stuck in and uh, keeping himself ahead of Damon Mulqueen and uh, Yavoski as well. So those 
three. Duke now Ivorsky, of course, getting caught out in the early stage to this race, dropping down 10 places in this one. So he'll be looking to uh, try and regain some of those places and get himself into that look, reverse grid slot as well, you know, because he's currently just outside of it. He needs to uh, gain a couple of positions. Yep, he's trying to get make the move here is Slavomir in the Semper Racing Machine. A really strong team, they've got some great drivers. Dvorsky, Serbula and of course team leader Wojciech Savinovic who sits in fourth at the moment who again is getting closer and closer to that lead car. Just there he is, just tenth or two a lap. And again McFarlane making a move there or trying to and Guinness I tell you what he's just placing his car exactly where it needs to be but has he covered the inside Ross McFarlane goes to pick his pocket here he comes with three minutes to go Ross McFarlane stuffs it up the inside there of Corrington Guinness it's a side-by-side -side drag race they bang wheels on the street Norbert Leitner he's picked Ross McFarlane as a drafting partner they're gonna go three wide down into the first corner then it's Ross McFarlane on the inside Guinness in the middle Leitner's gonna try and go around the outside McFarlane's got the move done can Guinness fight back with a cutback he's gonna try it no McFarlane shuts the door just in time and guess what watch Xivinovic is in for the fun as well Paul I, I thought that was going to end in tears when they were going three wide into that turn one, but uh, thankfully uh, cooler heads prevailed. Rob Sutherland, something's happened to him out there. Oh, he's got taken out into the tyre barrier, and Sutherland's had to take a tour back to the pit, so he's out of this uh, particular race. But yeah, McFarlane, he set that up. He set that up on the run into the Vidal chicane, that move. So a move into turn one was set up about five corners beforehand. Yeah, super impressive there as well. And to be fair to Guinness, Guinness raced him fair. He left the space and, you know, he, he's probably kicking himself for leaving that inside line open, but can't defend everywhere. And Ross McFarlane takes the lead then with a minute and 54 seconds to go. So this is the penultimate lap here of this opening race of the day. We've got two more to come, folks, with reverse grids thrown in there for good measure as well. So the drama is just getting started here in round six of the World Touring Car Series on Race Bot TV. McFarlane leads the penultimate lap. Guinness right behind him, then it's Leitner and Wojciech Savinovic, do not write him off, he's just got closer and closer and closer throughout this race and that little exchange really accelerated that progress as well, is he close enough to make an impact on this race as I can ask whoa, he's off onto the, the through service road and that's game over for Hacken. I think he caught the, the grass just on the corner entry there and that just sent, fired him off touch the grass as he's braking and away he goes now look at this Ross McFarlane feeling the need to to weave initially down the start finish straight he feels under pressure here from Guinez and from not Leitner Guinez looking to the inside the gap wasn't there though he wasn't far enough alongside and Leitner's thinking right come on lads I've had enough of waiting I want a piece of the action well well it's uh, on to the final lap then and oh big oh, big moment there for Ross McFarlane letting that rear of that Hyundai Elantra just twirl around we know that Ross McFarlane is a wizard in these touring car machines and I honestly thought he was going to spin there but he had it perfectly under control just using rotating the rear of that car so Pure Sims have obviously got that Elantra dialed in they've kind of been given a bit of a bloody nose by Kieran Harrison and Corentin Guinness from Sim RC over the course of the season, but they thought no, no more of it. And Ross McFarlane is striking back here as well. But can Corentin Guinness repay the favour here, Paul, that was dealt to him a couple of laps ago? Oh, Guinness made a mistake there on the exit. He got a wheel into the gravel and that just slowed down his exit. That's compromising him all the way up here through the Schumacher S and Leitner looking dangerous, looking left and right, not making a move though. Well, let's see if he can set it up for the run to the final corner. Leitner getting very cosy indeed now as well to the rear of Guinness's machine and could Guinness be under threat here to lose second place? McFarlane's just nipped out a little bit of a gap there as they approach that final chicane 
and light are just looming. Is he going to try and pop up the inside? No, there's no room to do it. Guinness is going to try and get close enough. Is he going to try and return the favour? McFarlane covers it off. Here comes Guinness. Oh, is he close enough? No, not quite. It's going to be Ross McFarlane. So Ross McFarlane wins here in the World Touring Car Series with Corin to Guinness right behind Norbert Leitner in third. And watching Savinovich finishes in fourth. Throwing a bed sheet over... Brilliant finish there as well. McFarland defending from a charge in corn to Guinness and Richard Simner comes home to win in the AM class a couple of positions ahead of Dan Martin, his closest rival in that AM class. So it's four in a row for Richard Simner in the AM class. Wow. Yeah, what a real run of form that Richard is going on right now. Uh, the only way that it could get even better for him is if it was a small reverse grid. He gained 10 places in that race, did Richard. Fantastic effort from him in that one. Spencer McCarthy, who started at the back of the grid, he gained 23 places in that one as well. So uh, there were some real movers in that field. But, uh, wow, what, what a... What a Race at the front of the field between Ross McFarlane, Corin Teguinas and Norbert Leitner. Those three gave us plenty of entertainment. Oof, they certainly did. They certainly did. And McFarlane playing it, playing a blinder there. Right, let's see how many cars we are going to reverse here with our spinny wheel. 20. Ooh, it's a big one. It's a big one. And by my reckoning, that will put James Parker on pole position for race number two but this is how they finished after 10 laps of action in the opening race of the evening here in round six of the world touring car series ross mcfarlane your winner from Corinton guinez and norbert leitner watch xavinovich getting close to a podium but not quite there in fourth terje flatten in fifth with nathan ames recovering to six after an earlier mishap then sam blees Szilard naji jack cedric and miguel freitas in 11th, it was Niklas Laubisch with Richard Simner taking the honours for the fourth time in a row in the AM class. James Holman was 13th with Jamie Rushworth 14th and Dan Martin rounding out the top 15. Then it was Andreas Gilman, Spencer McCarthy, Craig Williams, Mike Pollard and James Parker. 21st was Esteban Rodriguez, followed by Stephen Walker, Harry Fox, Ryan Hamilton, Slavomir Javorski, Damon Mulqueen, Oisin Hereford, Scott Malcolm, Nathan Davies, and Tom Stanley. Then in 31st, it was Pete Newman after his earlier incident with Alan McCain in 32nd, Chris Chatterton, 33rd, then Brian Gregory, Neil Rocks, Nick Clibbins, Yarosaw Shebula, Paddy Faulkner, Sam Smith, and David Baker. 41st was Stuart Bickley and Hakan Ask, the last driver on the lead lap. Then Rob Sutherland, El Neil and Neil Stevenson not making it to the flag. So one race in the books here at the Nürburgring, Paul. Uh, thoughts on that opening encounter? I thought it was a really, really good race at the front there. I thought it was nicely done, nice and clean. And um, yeah, it was it was a great move set up by Ross McFarlane there. As I said, it was about set up about five corners beforehand on the exit of the uh, Warsteiner curve onto that back section through the kink. He forced Corentin to take a different line through the Vidal chicane and that allowed him then to get up alongside through the final corner and down the start and finish straight into turn number one. So it's a real thinking person's track is this one. A lot of technical sections and uh, that move it was well done. But, uh, you know, Guinez, he, he stuck his nose in as well earlier on with a nice move as well. So uh, got to be commended for those of them. I just think Leitner missed out an opportunity of getting uh, a win or even a second place in that first race. I think he was just maybe... Um, a little bit apprehensive to get involved. I don't know, but uh, I, I thought he could have maybe made a move and followed Guinness through through at the Dunlop Airpin. Well, let's see what he can do in the second race. Of course, he'll start just ahead of Guinness and McFarlane in that reverse grid 
draw just inside the top 20. This is where we're going to really see what this is about, Paul, because in that leading group, they've qualified in that order. They know they've got very similar pace based on their qualifying performance. Now, it's a lot bit, little bit more of a mishmash that they've got to get through. That's what the World Touring Car, Touring Car Series is all about. It's something that McFarlane's been a master of in the past, but Guinness has usually got that just that sharper edge through traffic. Is that going to be a, a changing factor today, would you say? I mean, uh, to be fair, Ross is very experienced in these types of reverse grid races, even before World Sim Racing was a was a thing. You know, he, he knows how to, to do that as well. He's very experienced at that. So you're going to see Guinez, you know, McFarlane, um, Leitner, Savinovic, I think, would be a good shout as well of moving through. But Nathan Amess, don't forget, he finished that first race in fifth place. He's got pace. It was getting involved in that instant with David Baker that put him back a little bit. And I think that he could be a good shout at uh, working his way through the field and challenging for a win here. Yeah, that's a very good shout, Paul. Actually, he's going to be he's going to be a real threat, I think. And you never know what can happen in that opening corner, or especially on, on lap one. And then even on lap two, uh, it's so tight there down into turn one. There's so many um so many potential lines and trying to spot your breaking point and judge that breaking point on a race star it's really difficult it's not something that drivers tend to practice i suppose they practice their breaking point hundreds of times when they're just doing laps mm. but actually practicing that breaking into turn one when there's 10 cars all around you that's something that's a lot more instinct driven and sometimes it goes right and sometimes we see it piling up so that that picking the way through the traffic can can mean lots of things in that opening lap in these reverse grid races I, I mean this can win you championships these types of races now where you're in that reverse grid if you can work your way through that field a lot better than your competitors that you're fighting with in the championship that wins your championships it, it really does it gives you those opportunities for people out there to to move forward and, and get themselves some big points it also gives some good opportunities for people who maybe got caught up in a few things uh in that first race who managed to look themselves into a reverse grid and uh, and get themselves a potential of uh, some good points i know that's what i used to pray for whenever i got a reverse grid uh, roll in my favor when i were used to race in the series so so definitely you know there will be people who have got this opportunity now will be thinking right let's let's try and keep it maybe not get a win but keep it up there near the front to get yourself some big points uh, we have to address this paul we we, we uh I, I'm loving the analysis, but we're, we've got to address this in our RaceBot TV chat. It's great to see so many people enjoying the coverage tonight, but someone is taking uh, uh, taking objection to your flat cap. I, I can't stand here, stand here and have that. Ah, uh, well, everybody's got yeah. an opinion. Uh, and the, you know what they say? There's other things that everybody's got as well. Yeah. But anyway, we're, we're, not, we're not saying that's a family show, so uh, no, we'll not, not do that. Richard Sim there, well, how real, how cool is that? He's got time to just stroll into the Race Spot TV chat and go, yeah, not bad, another win, no problem. Yeah, I mean, you know, why not? You know, just... Uh just uh get you know give us a little bit of insight so it's good to see i'm also checking out the uh the virtual uh the virtual paddock as well that we've got here on the discord server and uh yeah just no no major drama or anything just people having a good discussion after after race number one between guinness mcfallon and Leitner. so uh yeah it's all good and well everybody's everybody's rather nice to each other in there this week it's not like the usual loggerheads with each other that we're used to seeing i get the feeling a way i would read maybe i'm 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 just a doom merchant but i can see a <laughs> i can see controversy brewing there in the virtual paddock as well as a little bit of needle between our top drivers as well who are on such a on such a uh, an, an edge of, of performance as well. Richard Simler said he wish he had that level of swagger. I bet he has that level of swagger after four bullet bourbons, I'm sure. He's got lots of swagger after after that. I want to know what he's planning on celebrating is, with is, uh, is that, tonight. Is that swagger or stagger? <laughs> Do you know what? 
in your mind it's swagger but on the outside it's stagger yes that's a very good point that's a very good point well before paul smith and i get even further distracted it's time for a message from our partners uh free m and pure sims and butt kicker a huge thank you for their support we'll be back in just a minute don't go anywhere Welcome back to Race Bot TV, round two of the night coming up here at the Nurburgring in the World Touring Car Series. It's Peter Akai here alongside the world's most stylish Yorkshireman, Mr. Flatcap himself, Paul Smith. Paul, two races to go and a reverse grid race. This is going to be a cracker. Yeah, and with it being quite a large reverse grid as well of 20 spots, it, it gives our leading drivers a little bit more to think about but it also gives some tremendous opportunities to drivers who wouldn't normally get into that top 10 you know no offense to those drivers by the way i know how hard it is to get into the top 10 here in this series so it gives you a tremendous opportunity to get yourself some good points and if you could keep yourself out of trouble maybe not get a race win but get some really good results out there that can really change things especially for our am drivers it certainly could, yeah, absolutely. I Mike Pollard there, just in practice, pulling off the uh, the save of the day so far, getting it oversteered up over the curb onto the grass and still managed to gather it all up again. So making his uh, Hyundai perform more like a, an I-20 uh, Rally 1 car rather than an Elantra touring car. I tell you what, interestingly, it's maybe just a commentator trying to find things that aren't there but uh, those pure sims cars look pretty lively at the rear pole well i mean that's the thing though with the touring car you want that back end to do a lot of the turning for you especially on corner entry you know, get the back end swinging out a little bit so that it then helps point the car in the right direction so you do want a lively rear end on your touring car and uh, and, and really sort of help especially around a track like this where it is more uh, of a technical circuit you do want that, that little bit of help then to get around the corners yeah it certainly does in this this circuit where it's so 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 technical in places as well so just under two and a half minutes to go in this practice session uh, conditions don't look overly different 26 degrees Celsius last time, 28 this time, Paul. So that is uh, not too, no excuses for it going wrong then because they're almost identical. Yeah, drivers will be very comfortable with how uh, this uh, this circuit will be feeling right now. And uh, uh, they won't need to touch the setup here. 
they'll be able to just get in there and uh, turn laps and, and drive fast. Um, it is worth pointing out, one of our commentary colleagues, Ryan Walker, is sad that you're not wearing your uh, uh, Brumos uh, Porsche t-shirt there. Well, I hope he doesn't. I hope, I hope he's quite happy that I'm wearing my Not Kill Racing Circuit polo shirt. So I hope that's good enough, Ryan. Good to, good to hear from you. I hope you're having a scotch uh, uh, as well. We've talked about Bourbon Ryan. He'll be having a, a scotch. He is the other half of double scotch after all. So um, <laughs> good, to, good, good to hear from him. And uh, oh, he would have. Ah, oh, he would have loved it. I was taking part in a race on Tuesday. I was in the uh, the venerable HPD where I was in a multi-class race with Aston Martin DBR9s. It would have been right up uh, Ryan Street. He's Mr. Aston Martin in the uh, Racebot TV uh, break room. Virtual break room. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, it gets, it, it, oh, I'll tell you what, it gets a bit rowdy in that break room at times, so it must be said. <laughs> yes. Some big opinions. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, looking forward to this race, um, it's got, that, that mix-up of the grid is going to uh, really uh, really make things interesting out there and see how those guys who finished at the front are able to work their way through. But also try and see anyone who got involved in any incidents in race number one to see how they can use that as a recovery to, to move themselves forward as well. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this second race of the night because it can make or break somebody's evening. Yes, it can. Yeah, because it's, you know, if it goes wrong in race one, you've still got the whole night to kind of recover. Race two, if it goes wrong and you miss the reverse grid for race three, well, it's uh, it's it's a kind of uh, difficult run to the end of the race meeting. Practice is now over, so let's quickly run through the grid and see how they will roll off for this second race of the day here at the Nürburgring for round six of the World Touring Car Series, brought to you by butt kicker 3m and pure sims norbert leitner quickest in the practice session there by three tenths of a second from sam blees but it will be james parker and mike pollard who make it an all dcw racing front row then it's craig williams spencer mccarthy andreas gilman and dan martin rolling off from six then it's jamie rushworth james holman richard simner niklas laubish miguel freitas and jack sedgwick then Szilard Nagy, Sam Blees, Nathan Ames, Terry A. Flatten, Wojciech Savinovic and Norbert Leitner. Row 10 is Corentin Guinez and Ross McFarlane with Esteban Rodriguez, Stephen Walker, Harry Fox and Ryan Hamilton. Then Slavomir Jaworski, David Mulqueen, Oisin Herford, Scott Malcolm, Nathan Davies and Tom Stanley. 31st is Pete Newman with Alan McCain, Chris Chatterton, Ben Gregory, Neil Rocks and Nick Clibbins rounding out the first 36 cars. Then Yaroslav Serbula, Paddy Faulkner, Sam Smith, David Baker, Stuart Bickley and Hacken Ask. Then it's Rob Sutherland, El Neil and Neil Stevenson rounding out the 45 cars. So it will be James Parker and Mike Pollard leading us down into turn one. The rest begin to rise. Off they go for the second time here at the Nürburgring. And it's a superb getaway from Parker. It's a poor getaway from Pollard. It's a rocketing getaway from Craig Williams in the Audi, but straight through the middle comes Spencer McCarthy in the geodesic car. They all miss their breaking point as their normal turn one at the Nürburgring. But it's going to be James Parker who leads the way as Craig Williams, our very own Frank Miller in the Soul Audi, shape-shifting his way through there. And so is he going to just get past Spencer McCarthy? He's left the door open for Pollard to have a pop. Pollard has gone up the inside of McCarthy, pushes McCarthy wide. So Hyundai leads Audi here in the Nürburgring. Oh, that was a good recovery from Pollard. I thought he was going to get hung out to dry there through the uh, arena and was able to squeeze ahead of Spencer McCarthy again. Oh, no, not again. Sam Smith. That car seems to attract trouble. Craig Williams off in the gravel and grass. He gets himself back on. Here comes McCarthy. Don't forget, McCarthy started at the back in race number one from a qual uh, qualifying ban. He has got a really good opportunity here. You bet he does, yeah, you bet he does. Oh, oh problem for Rodrigo, no big pile up, huge pile up, they're all smashing one into the other at the hairpin there. Oh, it's an absolute mess. Later on in the field, Harry Fox going slow at the back there. Now, did our, our front runners from race one, did they make it through there? I don't know if they did, Paul, you know, McFarlane's in 18th. 
Anna is in 15th. Where is Guinez? Guinez is up to 13th. He's made a great start. Yeah, fantastic start from Guinez. That's exactly what he needed out there. And uh, he's been moving forward through all of that. We've got a car stopped out there, and I think it's Leitner. I think Leitner's had issues, so I think he must have got a caught up in all of that shenanigans down at the hairpin. Well, we always have a bit of drama on lap number one with cold tyres and brakes, and we're certainly getting a bit of that here. But everybody's still having uh, a go. Pete Newman's taken to the pit lane, and we're going three wide, almost four wide, down the start for the straight. So Pete Newman's night goes from bad to worse, unfortunately as they head down into turn one once again jack sedgwick leaning on the nose of that little hyundai the lost a little bit shorter wheel base than the elantras behind him but as usual jack making the very best of it there in that brightly colored brakes setup shop machine 17 minutes to go then here at the Nürburgring and McCarthy's gone past Craig Williams so Spencer McCarthy we saw him had huge flashes of speed at Sebring a week ago and he seems to have carried that form over to the Nürburgring here as well he's got past Craig Williams and now setting off in pursuit of the Amplash driver James Parker Parker's been doing a very good job at the front to be fair you know he got himself about a second gap okay that's come down a little bit a mistake there from uh, Jamie Rushworth and that allowed Simna to go through. Simna's on a bit of a charge here, isn't he? He's uh, working his way forward into ninth place already. Says he doesn't have any swagger. Well, he's certainly doing a good job. And Rushworth now, is he going to help his Pure Sims outfit to compatriot in Ross McFarlane in holding back uh, currency Guinness and Nathan the Mess? Because McFarlane at the moment is stuck behind Flatten. Yeah, Terry Flatten holding... McFarlane at bay but I tell you what even better news for Richard Simner and indeed his DCW racing colleagues many of which are in the AM class championship leader in the AM class Dan Martin he is down in 41st place at this stage he had to come in to pit lane I think uh, by my time of screen record it could be a fault but anyway he's definitely been involved in some sort of issue and that gives a great opportunity for the chasing pack who are all having to score big points to reel in Dan Martin in this Amplash chase I think Martin was one of those cars that got involved in that one down at the uh, Dunlop hairpin and uh, yeah he's, he's about two seconds three seconds back from Neil Rocks towards the back of the field um, this though this is great racing here Gilman is involved here so too is Pollard and uh, Cedric Jack Cedric always exciting there in that Veloster he'll uh, certainly not be backwards in coming forwards here but um, right now McCarthy he is on a charge he was uh, considerably quicker about half a second quicker than McCarthy on that last lap well well let's it. it's game on at the front of the field then reel in Parker and get a get a little bit of a little bit of a gap because the cavalry is coming Cedric Lowbeach James Holman Quentin Guinness up to ninth as well Guinness is only four seconds off the lead as well so McCarthy if he wants to win this race he's got to get moving uh, something must have happened out there because Simna's dropped down from ninth to 13th so something has happened there and that's dropped the uh the, the hard charging AM Championship contender Richard Simner uh, down a little bit. He's uh, settled himself down right in front of Wojciech Zavinovich. Good luck, Richard. Well, there's, I don't, there's, don't think there's any settling going on there, that's for sure. When you've got Zavinovich plus zero, it uh, certainly uh, it certainly puts up the fear into you, that's for sure. That ominous car in the background. So, this is that was the Ryan Hamilton having a big look up the inside, and that triggered all. Oh, all manner of chaos and actually they all get relatively away with it it was behind them where the real damage went on as oh big move there from craig williams right up the inside of james parker up over the curb wow that's a fast car to the circuit too but the the frank Bela of the world touring car series fearless he is but uh, parker that's lost him two places in this race because he's he's lost the lead as well mccarthy has made his way past to the lead. Now, Sedgwick made a big dive on Gilman, Andreas Gilman at the Vidosh Kane. Here's what happened then. And that's 
what happened to Simna. So that's what dropped him down those four places. And I tell you what, he's lucky that he only lost four. That could have been a whole lot worse. That looked like a one-way ticket to the barrier and did well to keep it on terra firma. So lives to fight another day, does Richardson. The Abbey's lost more places. He's more places, down to 17th now is Simner. So was that his second mistake then? Uh, or has there been another one? So Simner's day, going from back to, from going, well, going from hero to zero, actually, to get all the cliches in at once. And uh, he uh, might have to keep that bourbon on ice for now. Yeah, I, I don't think that it's going to be three uh, enough of am when it's not going to be five in her own, unfortunately, for Richard, because uh, Craig Williams, he is a quick driver. That Audi, though, it, it, it does like to use up its front tyres a little bit uh, throughout the race. So um, Parker, James Parker, could really get a go. And here's what happened to Simon. It's Wojciech Savinovic. Get on! And do you know what? Sim Sim nothing Simon could do that. Savinovic lost control up over the kerb, and Simon is the innocent party. Dear. Yeah, nothing Simner could do there. It's just one of these races when you're right in the rough and tumble. Sometimes it can go your way and other times not. And it's just this is one where it hasn't. But it's a long season here in the World Touring Car Series. 36 races across the course of the season. So you've got to take the rough with the smooth. And with Carthy, he has made his move. He's now into the lead. And with uh, three quarters of a second advantage over Craig Williams, who we saw that amazing move there on James Parker. Cedric is on the charge as well in fourth, but he's bringing a cavalry with him. Pollard in there, Gilman, oh, and the impulse racing car has a look. Niklas Laubisch in seventh. We know how quick Niklas is in GT cars. It's starting to get, get better, bit better results now in this touring car. Look, look at this queue of traffic there <laughs> behind Pollard. He'll look in his rear view mirror and go, oh no, not these drivers. Uh, they're all coming in now into turn one. That's a dive and a half from Guinness. Contact. And well, I think the inevitable happened there. Yeah, yeah, it certainly did. And McFarlane in the Pure Sims car, he thought, oh, there's, gonna, there's opportunity here. Where there is chaos, there is opportunity, and uh, trying to find its way through. But the, it is simply two by two traffic. It's like touring cars are going on to Noah's Ark here. Uh, it's certainly easier than boarding your local Caledonian McRae ferry. Anyway, that's a, that's a Scottish reference. I've just realised. Uh, so <laughs> Loud Beach is going up the inside here. We're known for our ferries in Scotland, and well, not in a good way. As oh, the inside goes Nathan Ames and oh Holman oh that's not nice no 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 no, no. oh and well. that was always gonna happen and I think I, I'm sorry but Nathan Ames needs to be the bigger person there and not turn it left and down and watch your rejoin I know you've just been dumped but be careful when this car's coming down uh I, I, I tell you what, if I was on the stewards panel, get the book out, lads. We're, we're, we're throwing it. Yeah, get, get, both, get, get both. Stretch off whatever you're strong. Yeah, I think that's a 50 50 part them both after that. Yeah, that's, there's no place for that uh, at all. Uh, that's for sure. But what is it you say, Paul? Is uh, you live by the sword, you die by the swords. You know, they, you get involved in caper like that, and you are one of you, if not both of you, is going to end up in the fence. Nobody wins these encounters. I've always found so that's a shame that's a real shame to see that but back at the front quality stuff with Spencer McCarthy stretching his advantage out to one second from Craig Williams who in turn has his teammate now closing down so how much cooperation will there be here between Craig Williams and Jack Sedgwick I, I, I think <laughs> uh, I, mean, yeah. I, I think well uh, Craig does like to fight people for a position but uh, if he's clever about things, him and Jack could really work together and uh, have a move on Spencer McCarthy towards the end of the race. Yeah, don't slow each other down. McCarthy's only, what, a, a half a second, no, a second ahead of Craig right now. Be, think the bigger picture. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Bigger pictures the way forward. This is a replay of James Holman completely just shoves uh, shoves him under the grass. 
Hammer is onto the grass and yeah, Hammer retaliates with a, a classic quarter panel job. And uh, yeah, I think you're right, Paul. Uh, that's, uh, that is lift book, raise arm and throw. <laughs> the instructions there. <laughs> um, yeah, an encyclopedia to make it really extra effect. Somebody get the blue book out. And uh, if you're a UK motorsport uh, involved in UK motorsports, you'll know what the blue book is. Um, we saw that uh, nice little mirror signal manoeuvre then from uh, uh, Sedgwick and from uh, Craig Williams. And, uh, yeah, that's just a, my problem in that is if you're now from the mess number 36, be the bigger person, just back off the throttle. If 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 James if Holman wants to play those games, let him play those games. Don't then turn left hand down into him. That's my this opinion on it. But shocking, it, Holman shouldn't be putting him in that position. Shocking. Yeah. yeah. And then right hand downs him. Eh, left hand downs him. Sorry. P pretty appalling on both counts. Yeah. I mean, uh, both, right both right drivers. Out, oh, absolutely appalling. Uh, no excuse for that. Thank goodness. Are you glad you're not in the Stewart's battle anymore, Paul? Yes. You glad you're glad you're well, no, that would be a really easy decision for me because, as I've just said, we'd have to throw the book at them, but there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, Jamie Rushworth, he's trying to hold off the charge here from Oisham Hereford in the black geodesic car with the yellow accents on it. Sedgwick has got past Williams and already has pulled a set three quarters of a second gap from his teammate in third. So Sedgwick now closing the gap down to uh, McCarthy. So there's only three quarters of a second now between the leader McCarthy and Sedgwick. So Sedgwick is really the danger man here. A 206.2 last time by three tenths of a second quicker than our leader McCarthy. Yeah, so uh, Cedric is on that charge. Absolutely, I said, you know, play the sensible game and uh, and work together in that one. There's a Semper Racing car, Sebula, I believe. Potentially, it was pulling over to the side. Uh, no, it was uh, Yavorsky, and in fact, he's taking the tour. But uh, no, it's still part to the side of the track as Yavorsky. But uh, yeah, uh, Cedric is on the charge. He wants to win here. Yeah, Yavorsky. Sitting there with, uh, yeah, not, not, uh, no drive, and um, uh, eventually gets going. Um, so he's laps down. He's just out of the pit lane. So I think maybe he's just trying to make sure that everything's okay on his, uh, with his rig, for example. And, you know, if something's maybe not working right with his rig, then you might as well go out there and just test it. Yeah, fair point. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, I can ask. Oh, get involved in a, th a three-wide job here as well as Alan McCain. Stuffs it up the inside there as well and shuffles the order out even further. The battle's going on up and down the circuit. And at the front, that gap continues to shrink. It's now only half a second between McCarthy and Sedgwick, who in turn has opened up a gap. A mess. Something's happened today for the mess. And in fact, he's out the race. Oh my goodness, that's uh, that's not the line to take. That geodesic car out of control. What on earth is happening? Is, is everybody just take, drunk a bit of loopy juice here? Ah, uh, they've been on the silly sauce, that's for sure. So, looks like Ames has got in. Well, um, do, now, does Laubish turn across him? Is he no. there? I don't think that Ames is alongside enough to make that move. Yeah. And he's out. Yeah, so Laubish, ah, yes, there was contact coming into the chicane. Ames gets into the back of him, and yeah, maybe a little bit moving on the bit, but you are turning in there. It is an early apex. Ah, I don't know, but I, I, if you I, look I, at I'm, the... I'm not comfortable with what's going on there. I think that no, it's some poor driving from drivers who should know better. Yeah, it would. I think it, if you look at the, the a couple of laps before the incident, uh, that we saw it, uh, in detail there. I think Amis has just lost his cool by the looks of things. Um, I think if you take that all into account as one big picture, it's uh, clearer to see what's what's gone on. So, back at the front, well, we've got a showdown here. Three minutes and 40 seconds to go, and it's McCarthy versus Sedgwick, Elantra versus Veloster, Geodesic versus Craig Setup Shop here, uh, and Black and White plays Technicolor. 
nice and easy to spot, isn't it, Jack yeah. Sedgwick's car? And he's certainly doing a good job with it as well. He's uh, he's pulled forward. I mean, he's up 10 places from where he started in this race. Keenez, by the way, just made up another place. up into oh! oh, huge mistake there. Sorry, Paul. A huge mistake from McCarthy. And just here comes Craig Williams now. He's gone, oh, thank you, teammate. Yes, please. And, and then thinks, actually, no, maybe... Jack's got the better chance to go for the win here. But McCarthy made a mistake of his own. And what Gordon to Guinness with three minutes to go isn't far behind either. He might just be a little bit too far away. But that mistake from McCarthy was all his own. But actually, Sedgwick came off worst. He did, indeed. You're absolutely right there, Peter. And uh, Guinness, well, here we go. Here's the replay then. Oh, he's touched the grass. That's what it is. And, and they both make contact. So, I mean, there's nothing that McCarthy can do there. It's a genuine mistake. They both end up with a slowdown penalty. Craig Williams goes, Ooh, oh, I need, to, I, I, I need to just pull up alongside, but not actually go past. And mean, with all, all of that going on, Guinness has got ahead of uh, James Parker and uh, sniffs a podium and maybe even a win here. It's going to be a tall order, is that there? Oh, yeah, Craig. Uh, it's like, like see, Craig, Craig, uh, of Craig's setup shop got so excited there and thought, oh, yes, great. And then, yeah, realised that there was a there was a pecking order at, at that time. And Guinness is on a real charge as well. He's pulling in Craig Williams really quickly. And Ross McFarlane making a move there on Mike Pollard, who's had a great run. He is put up with the absolute hurricane that is the Pro Clash drivers coming through. He's handled that challenge so so well as has his teammate james parker in fourth greg williams is leading the am class at the moment but i think there's still plenty to happen in these next 90 seconds uh get your popcorn out everybody because things could be about to get a bit interesting out there um if you're Ross McFarlane, you're wanting to just try and get ahead of James Parker to minimise the loss of points to Guinez. But meanwhile, at the front, McCarthy, once again, under pressure from Jack Cedric. And we've seen that Cedric is quick into that Vidal chicane in that Veloster. It seems to suit the car, uh, the Veloster, better than the Elantra. But look at this now. They run out the corner. They've both got the same engine, the same running gear. It's just different chassis ever so slightly different aero. I would think the Alantia yeah. might be a bit slippier as... Oh! McCarthy, big, big block to the pit wall there. And Cedric thinks, OK, you want it that way. OK, gloves off. They come through the arena section as well. Cedric trying to give a wide berth to McCarthy, but trying to maximise his speed there. He's going right around the outside, using the nimbleness, that manoeuvrability of the Velosters. Absolutely side by side. McCarthy gives him the room this time, and it shuts the door, rightly so, of Cedric there as well. Game on once again. That's just thrilling stuff to finish this race off. Craig Williams is doing the best that he can to help his teammate out by holding back quarantine Guinness as well. So Williams doing a job in that Audi. Look at how close they're getting there between the two of them. This is an opportunity down into the Dunlop hairpin. And McCarthy knows it. McCarthy preparing to cover the line here as well. But when they get to the braking zone, you've got to pick your line. McCarthy trying to cover it as much as he can as they come around and then up the hill towards the Michael Schumacher. Yes, we knew that. Michael Schumacher, he was always loved a, a big move to go for a race, whether it was controversial or not. And will Cedric be able to pull off something similar in the United Colours of Benetton coloured Craig setup shop? And David Loster is going to try and go around the outside of Forsteiner. Oh, this is inspired stuff from Cedric around the outside. That is glorious, glorious stuff from Jack Sedgwick. I did not see that one coming at all, but he had it planned and McCarthy has no answer for now, but two corners to go from here. Sedgwick goes to the inside. It's, oh, they make contact. They touch again. They touch once more on the brakes into the chicane. They go. They nearly rub paint again. Is there going to be a goal from Spencer McCarthy? Sedgwick knows exactly better than that to hold that inside line, but here comes McCarthy around the outside. It's going to be a run to the flag checker flag in the air is it going to be Cedric is it going to be McCarthy it is Sedgwick oh wow we want to finish one of the moves of the season Paul well we had wow. some uh, we had some uh, 
questionable driving out there but on that last lap we got an absolute diamond of driving right out there that that move by jack sedgwick it's a tip of the flat cap from me that was absolutely sensational to see there as uh, well craig williams as well let's not forget he's the winning amp in this race he's he's broken richard simner's uh, stranglehold on the race wins for am and he gets the win in the audi and remember craig williams is second in the am championship he came into this round just 50 points behind dan martin who finished that race in 37th place and craig williams gets points for third so that is about a 50 point swing there give or take uh, I'll let Paul do the mathematics on that one, but uh, goodness me, no, he's shaking the head behind the scenes here, folks. I'll, I'll get uh, all the calculators out. Okay, back uh, the look, maths. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's absolutely. So, what is a reverse grid going to be? We've got race three coming. Oh, and it's a tiny reverse grid, absolutely tiny, which puts watch exhibitive. Oh no, excuse me, it puts. I'm getting too excited now. It, that puts Silar Naji on pole position. Jamie Rushworth on the front row as well. So, this is how they finished in a thriller here at the Nürburgring. Ring. The second race of three, Jack Sedgwick wins by 52 thousandths of a second from Spencer McCarthy. Craig Williams, am class winner and an overall podium in the sole Audi on the circuit. They don't call him Frank Bieler for nothing. Quentin Greenes and Ross McFarlane, we can't underestimate how impressive that is to go from 19th and 20th to 4th and 5th, showing their class and their championship winning credentials. James Parker, great run from him to 6th, with Terrier Flatten in 7th, Wojciech Savinovic in 8th, Mike Pollard in 9th, and Andreas Gilman, he rounds out your top 10. And confirming then, Jamie Rushworth and Silar Naji will be your front row with Naji on that critical pole position. Oisin Herford just misses out on that reverse grid. He'll start from 13th in the final race of the day. Then Stephen Walker came home in 14th. David Baker, Esteban Rodriguez, Richard Simner, Sam Blees, Niklas Laubich and Miguel Freitas. 21st was Harry Fox with Damon Mulqueen, Chris Chatterton, Yaroslav Shebula and Alan McCain rounding out the top 25. Norbert Leitner, not the best race for him coming home in 26th. And it was Ben Gregory, Stuart Bickley, Scott Malcolm, and Dan Martin ended up being classified in 30th. Then it was El Neil, Nick Clibbins, Neil Stevenson, Rob Sutherland, Nathan Davies, Neil Rocks, James Holman, Ryan Hamilton, Hacken Ask, and Tom Stanley. And the last few, Sam Smith, Paddy Faulkner, Nathan Ames, Salavir Yavorsky, and Pete Newman, none of those three making it to the flag. <laughs> Well, well, uh, where do we begin? Where, where would you like to begin, Paul? Uh, uh, you I, Over to you. <laughs> I, I, I say we celebrate the greatness. And my goodness, what a sensational race. Uh, and fair credit uh, to them as well. Spencer McCarthy congratulated Jack Cedric in the, uh, the Discord server there. A great battle and Cedric likewise gave it gave it back and said you know it was it was fun but uh, yeah that was uh, absolutely sensational for all that happened before forget about that 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 happened we, we want to move forward and look at the positives that was simply brilliant between those two it got a bit dicey a few laps before don't forget down at the vidal chicane when mccarthy touched the grass and uh, they ended up getting together but my goodness, to do that on the last lap around the outside was, as I said it at the end, sensational. It was almost as sensational as your race two flat cap, which the <laughs> eagle-eyed viewers will notice. It's not the same as race one. And we've got another one for race three, don't we, Paul? You've got oh, more, got, more, got more outfit selection. changes yeah. than Beyonce. <laughs> well, maybe not that many, but... The uh... Beyonce of Bradford. <laughs> I've, I've never been called that before, and quite frankly, it'll never be called that again. <laughs> oh, we, we can't even say we're at the end of our, our mid-race break. We, we, we usually were quite serious for five or ten minutes, and then it, if it goes any longer than it ten, descends. we just can't hold it. It descends. It does. It, it does. Let's look at that. I mean, the AM class... He came into this round thinking, oh, Dan Martin, he's not away with it, but at the half race, half season point to be 150 points in the lead. And then all of a sudden, 
Dan doesn't have to do a huge amount wrong. And then all of a sudden, Craig Williams is having a superb night at the office. And we're game on once again. So Dan Martin had problems that race. His headphones died, apparently. Uh, uh, we're getting word from the virtual paddock. So yeah, he, he that might explain why he was having issues out there in that second race of the evening and i know from bitter experience just how hard it is to drive these cars when you've got all your sensors but take away that that sense of hearing because you don't realize just how much you drive these cars on your hearing um you know to know what revs you're in for the corner you know what gear you're going to be in and you can roughly guess how much how fast you're going by how, the revs as well of the car um so you lose so much from that and it just throws you um for a race so dan to be fair to him actually didn't do too bad a job to finish in 30th place in the end very true yeah that's a that's a great effort and when stuff like that happens you just have to dig in and do your best as it's never ideal but yeah and it's not it's it's not just the revs it's just hearing the throttle input as well just if you've got a little bit of throttle input hearing if it's hooking up or not hearing the tires as well yep. of course these cars the the front tires are having to do so much put the power down and steer and everything else so yeah good effort there from dan martin but that's, mm. that's a that's a stinger for his championship hopes because He's going to start from 30th in this race. And within that top 12, you've got Craig Williams, James Parker, Mike Pollard, and Andreas Gilman. Most of those are sort of in the hunt for the, the championship as well. So they've got the opportunity to land a second punch here with that great grid spot. Uh, and that's what I said uh, before race number two, was taking advantage of those reverse grids whenever you can. And if you can strike lucky, then for race number three uh, with the reverse grid it can score you some big points especially for those um championship drivers so definitely you need to take advantage of days like this and uh, yeah th these drivers who are going to be starting up there like you say gilman and pollard second row of the grid for them here in this race it's going to be uh, quite the task uh, pollard i think will be hoping for a better race start than race one but uh uh you know just control that that clutch a little bit better and it'll get a nice pull away well we're going to pull away for just a little moment here after a message from our sponsors we have race three coming up and it's one you do not want to miss do not go anywhere Welcome back to Race Bot TV, where we are ready to go for race number three 
of the night, the final race of this meeting here at the Nürburgring for round six of the World Touring Car Series for 2023. It's Peter Mackay here alongside Paul Smith in the commentary booth. And we've had two thrilling encounters so far going right down to the wire. Wouldn't expect anything different here, Paul. Oh, no, absolutely not. I mean, <laughs> this is what we've grown to expect of the World Touring Car Series, isn't it? We we do get some absolute flashes of brilliance in this championship, and we see it season upon season here. And uh, certainly, I'm looking forward to this uh, this final race of the evening and, and to see what people can do out there. What what. Are, people can do in terms of taking advantage of um, these reverse grids and uh, if you have had a particularly bad night just one more race to go and then uh, you're good for the evening and you get your week off next week yeah it's amazing how how that week off can can shuffle the pack sometimes as well some drivers react really well to it and uh, a little bit of a refresh can can sometimes be nice and and sometimes it allows if teams to go in and do some some proper testing and work on the setups too. And don't forget as well, this break happens with a new iRacing build. So potentially, we've not had anything confirmed yet, potentially there may be a balance of performance change between the cars. And you never know, cars like the Honda or the, the Veloster or the Audi may be come forward to the to the front. An excellent point, yeah, an absolutely excellent point um, for for that, uh, and it, it can also change. That change can it, it, the, the 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 way these cars behave could really turn on its head, and the drivers have got to adapt to that as much as they possibly can in a short space of time. So that's hugely interesting, hugely exciting um, to to think about as well got bits and pieces of new new content coming as well some of it's been announced i'm sure some of it's still being kept under wraps but the uh, the renault clio cup cars coming to i racing paul what do you make of that I, i've always enjoyed the clio cup uh car I, i've thought it's always a, a good little car. i like a short wheelbase sort of 200 horsepower ish car um always kicks up its rear wheel through corners it's it's the the fun little cars them and uh, and hopefully we can have some uh, really good racing maybe uh, hopefully uh, from the old clear cup days on the btcc calendar hopefully not uh, quite so much panel damage happening i think there'll be quite a lot of virtual yes. panel damage somehow <laughs> uh, to begin with get, uh, get, uh, get on the phone to the local renault dealership while you can <laughs> uh, yes absolutely get get the spares built up uh well, actually, I used to own a, a Renault Clio, a Renault Sport Cup, uh, not a not a race car, but the the Cup road car, and it's still one of the very best cars I've ever owned. It cost me five thousand pounds, and it was the best five thousand pounds I've ever spent. It was brilliant, chassis from the gods. You could rev it out forever. Of course, these these they're a bit a little bit different now. They're turbocharged engines. This was one of the old naturally aspirated cars, and oh, it's great! I felt like Francois Delacour driving this thing. It was great. Let's let's let not not let uh, Mrs. Mackay hear that that was the uh, the best five grand you ever spent. But <laughs> on a car, I mentioned. On a I car, yes. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Hello, Daily Mail. <laughs> misrepresented yes uh, so you've been called beyonce and the daily mail all in one broadcast and the thing is i know which one of those is more offensive to me oh dear we're very sorry for you folks we'll have some great insightful and measured and most importantly disciplined commentary for you coming up for this third and final race of the day here and we'll confirm how they start for this 20 minute sprint in just a moment. Ross McFarlane quickest in the warm up session, a 207.3, three tenths of a quick second quicker than Wojciech Savinovic. But it'll be Silar Naji and Jamie Rushworth on the front row of the grid. Then it's Andreas Gilman and Mike Pollard with Wojciech Savinovic and Terry Flatten on row three. James Parker, Ross McFarlane, Carlton Guinez, Craig Williams, Spencer McCarthy, and Jack Cedric. Right out your top 12. Then it's Oyston Hereford, Stephen Walker, David Baker, Esteban Rodriguez, Richard Simler, and Sam Blees. Then it's Declas Laubisch, Miguel Freitas, Harry Fox, Damon Mulqueen, Chris Chariton, and Yaroslaw Sebula. 
Ben Alan McKay, Norbert Leitner, Ben Gregory, Stuart Bickley, Scott Malcolm and Dan Martin. L. Neil, Nick Clibbins, Neil Stevenson, Rob Sutherland, Nathan Davies and Neil Rocks. Then it's James Holman, Ryan Hamilton, Hackenass, Tom Stanley, Sam Smith and Paddy Faulkner with Jak- ja- Slavomir Jaworski rounding out the 43 car grid. And no, folks, we have not had transfer deadline day here in the World su- Sim Racing paddock. Uh, a little error with our graphics there, so apologies for that. We've not seen everyone make a late race car change. It will be Shilar Naji who leads us away into this race. And off we go. It's an impulse racing 1-2, heading down into turn 1 as they go Naji from Andreas Gilman with Mike Pollard having a look up the inside of Zvinovic there watch for that number 87 for racing car that orange and black machine is going to be a big threat from the word go once again though Pollard getting caught out by uh, the start then not the, the greatest pull away but yeah uh, certainly a good pull away for Naji and He's a driver who has shown pace in the impulse car. He'll be wanting to try and run away at the front whilst he can. Yeah, he's going to try and make the most of that opportunity for certain. And already, Contangina is getting in a proper little skirmish there with Ross McFarlane. And Mike Pollard having to be a part of it as well there in that yellow and blue DCW racing car. And off goes one of the impulse cars. And it, is it Silar Naji? Is it Gilman? I think it's one of the front runners. Oh, I'm not sure who which impulse car was it. Leitner? Uh, it was. Them all. I, I think it was. But uh, Naji, more importantly, made a mistake down at the Bumlock Dunlop hairpin. So it's Gilman to the front now. It was L. Neil who went off there in the impulse racing car. So already, look at Savinovich. Here he comes. He's going to try and make the move straight away into the Warsteiner curve. It's Gilman who hangs on, though, as well. He's, to, uh, like you say, Paul, a respecter of no ego. And Gilman has pushed Savinovich back into second position. Terry Flatten right there in third as well. So watch for him. But here comes Savinovich. He's going to go for the Craig Williams over the curb and into the braking zone. They go again. Gilman places his car exactly where it needs to be. And Savinovich has to back out of it. And that actually kept, just checks up Terry Flatten a little bit as well. I think Savinovich was actually trying to line up Gilman for the exit of the Vidal chicane, but he dropped a little bit too far back there and wasn't able to get the run and get it stuck. But across the line, Savinovich, he wants one thing. One thing's on his mind. That's the top step of the podium. Yep, it is. And here he goes up the inside at turn one, then hard on the brake. And oh, Gilman moves across on the brakes. They make a little bit of contact wheel to wheel. You don't want to do that too often. You can end up bending the steering and all sorts of nasty stuff. And Terrier Flatten's going to take a bite now at Andreas Gilman as they come through. And Gilman holding off. Oh, Flatten stuffs it up the inside there as well. But on the cutback, is Gilman going to handle, handle it off again? No. So Terrier Flatten moves into second position. So perhaps Savinovich time at the front isn't going to be so simple. Well, definitely not because Corin Tinguinez is on the move as well. Yeah, Guinness is uh, is on a charge here. He wants to uh, outscore Ross McFarlane, c- uh, curtail Ross McFarlane's opportunity of getting some big points here this week. Jack Sedgwick, well, race winner from race two. It was him and Rushworth that came together on the exit of... Uh, was that Van Bo- uh, No, that was Valstein, wasn't it, the exit of? Yeah, nothing Jack could have done about that one. He was an innocent passenger in that incident, but his teammate, Craig Williams, is there in ninth place, uh, third place in the AM class. Andreas Gilman is right in the middle of the pro class melee, and he leads the AM class for now, but he's got to be careful with that tornado of pro cars coming around, and oh, big, big punches back and forward. That was when El Neil went off in car number 216. So, Scott Malcolm also in the pits along with Jack Cedric. So, Malcolm picking up damage on that opening lap. Yeah, Scott's not had a good season. I think it'll be, um, it'll be safe to say that. Former uh, former teammate of mine. And uh, he is somebody who's a bit of a stalwart in touring cars as well. As Guinez moves ahead of Flatten to... 
It's Savinovic versus Guinez at the front. Oh, I tell you what, I'm looking forward to this one because whenever these two have come up against each other, it has been magic. It, you bet it has, yeah. And I think Ross McFarlane back in fifth position, he'll hope that Guinez and Savinovic get into it quickly uh, so that he can catch up and get involved in it too because if they, they work, work together, they could potentially break away. But don't write off Terrier Flatten in car number seven. We know how quick he is in that geodesic car as well. And Andreas Gelman, he's just filtering in there quite nicely as well in position for some very strong and class points if he finishes there. Lots of work to do. Mike Pollard and Big Williams linger in 8th and 9th, 2nd and 3rd in the AM class. On our timing tower, the car's in green for the Pro class, the car's in blue for the AM class. As a move there from oh, Stephen Walker on Oyston Herford, so geodesic on geodesic, white versus black. And it's, is it going to be Herford or Walker who gets the better of it there? It's just going to be Hereford. Only just, though. Yep. You're absolutely right there. And, uh, in fact, Walker got a little bit checked up there, and now he's going to come under pressure uh, from that Pure Sims car of David Baker. So, Baker, it, of course, had that incident in race one and had to work his way through the field in race two. He's trying to just salvage whatever he can here in race number three, and still... Uh, well, the man from the Midlands, from the East Midlands, is trying his best to go around the outside and you can make that work. You get on the power nice and early and that's job done. Nicely yeah. done there from David. Very good move there from David Baker. Get that move done on the triple two of Stephen Walker. So now going to try and put the foot down here, does Baker. He's down Oyston Herford, who's made a very quick breakaway, actually. Um, and already onto the back of... Craig Williams, in, who sits in ninth at the moment, glued together with Mike Pollard in that yellow and blue DCW racing car just going through the front of shot. 13 minutes to go. Savinovic leads, but only by a quarter of a second from Quentin Guinez with Terrier Flatten right in there as well. As Craig Williams goes for a move on Pollard. That's going to be tight there. Did they get through? Oh, only just. Yeah. And turn one always just encourages people to make some uh, some wild moves and to, to try and get a place. And we always say that that arena section is a great place for making a move. And if you lose a place, you can make a counter move pretty much straight away through that because of the way that that arena section goes. So it does produce some tremendous racing. And, uh, and I think that's actually one of the the better improvements of this uh, Nürburgring that they made over the years um, compared to, it was just like a little right-left chicane, wasn't it? Uh, before they built the uh, arena section. Um, I seem to remember uh, uh, something like Pedro Denis, Denis uh, upside down in Formula 1 in the European Grand Prix back in the late 90s um, and through there. So yeah, the arena section certainly does give us some tremendous racing. It does, yeah, and it's, it's interesting how they're in that arena. They use it for the, um, let me get this run the right way, they, they use that for the NLS races for the Nürburgring Endurance Championship, but they go left, and uh, they kind of go do that little chicane for the Nürburgring 24 hour and then go down towards the hairpin, so, uh, yeah. That, that's just to give them some more padded space. <laughs> yes. Because <laughs> they need it for that. <laughs> Yeah, we're nearly 150 cars in a good year for the Nürburgring 24 hour. Although they do have 25 kilometres to spread them out on, so it's not so bad. It's oh, a big move here, huge move from Terrier Flatten then, as Guinness has already made his way through to the front of the pack. So Guinness leads then from Wojciech Savinovic, who in turn has big problems from behind from Terrier Flatten and Ross McFarlane. He's coming in for the fun there as well. And Andreas Gilman's thinking, oh, this is fun being part of all these pro drivers as McFarlane makes a move then on Gilman. Can he get it closed down in time? Gilman's going to try and hold the inside line. McFarlane has to back out of it for now. He's going to go into a little bit of a switchback here as well. Gilman gives him the room. McFarlane, big dive up the inside, and Gilman does yield after all. So, Gine, Sovindovic, Flatten. McFarlane, four pro drivers, four superstars leading at the front of this race. I'll tell you what, I think 
Savinovic must feel like his pocket's been picked right there with that move from Guinez. He, he's just been caught off guard and, and already Guinez is trying to pull away from Savinovic. Uh, I mean, Wojciech, last lap was a, a 2.075. Now, of course, there was that overtake done on him um, compared to Guinez's 2.065. So, uh, Guinez a second faster because of making that move. It'll be interesting to see how their, their times pan out here in this lap now that uh, the move's been completed but i'll tell you what guinez is he's on a charge and he's uh, saying see you later boys i'm off you bet he is yeah he's making a great great charge here using that clean air as much as he can he's trying to put in some qualifying laps stretch the field out a little bit meanwhile uh Craig Williams still trying to chase down Mike Pollard for 8th position and the issue is there's a whole cast of drivers lining up behind him. Hereford, Baker, Walker, Leitner, big charge through the field from Norbert Leitner. He started off the night so well it went to pot in race 2 and this is a great comeback from the Hungarian. Yeah, he's up 13 places in this race so far as Leitner so he's, uh, he's on a hard charge here in this one and... Uh, Baker as well, don't forget, he's another one that was on a bit of a, a, a run here. There's a move from Leitner down the inside into the final corner. Get on the power, a little bit of a squeeze, squeezy squeeze, but should be okay. As they carry on across the line, absolutely neck and neck between these two. Yeah, very close indeed. Here comes Leitner though, he's got the inside for turn one. He's leaning on the brakes as hard as he dares. And Walker trying to defend, but Leitner's got it. Oh, just, yeah, Leitner's got it. Great move there from Norbert Leitner in the number 29 impulse racing machine. Back at the front, Inez is still holding strong. He's pulled out half a second advantage over Savinovic. Savinovic almost matching Inez's time lasting by, just giving away about half a tenth of a second as well. So... Who's going to come to the fore? Has McFarlane got anything to say sitting there in fourth? I mean, McFarlane, we've, we've seen him play the measured game in the past and uh, and not going for any rash moves. I think at this stage of the season, he needs to start making some moves now to, to really try and get a championship charge on the way. He knows how to win a championship. You, you're absolutely correct in, in pointing out that he won season one at the very last race of the championship as well. Uh, it was heartbreak for, for Guinez. He's won four in a row GT championships in the World GT Championship. So again, he is well experienced at winning championships, but I think he's come across a, a formidable fur in Harrison and Guinez. Yes, he has, yeah, and he knows so well about racing against Quentin Guinez. It was it went right down to the wire in season one. McFarlane came out best. Season two, well, very much Guinez's uh, Guinez's title, and this is the season where McFarlane's trying to get it back. But we could see with if Kieran Harrison continues his great season, he could be the third champion in three seasons here in the World Touring Car Series. Harrison not here this week, so that does allow the rest to catch up a little bit. Uh, of course, there are drop scores in this championship, but you don't want your drop score to be a zero. If you can allow your drop score to be as good as possible, that is definitely to your benefit. Under seven minutes to go then in this race. I'll tell you what, Mike Pollard is not allowing Craig Williams to get close enough to make a move, and now Williams is under big pressure from Oyston Hereford. Here comes Hereford, then stuffs it up the inside of Williams and straight into the side door of the Audi, and Hereford's through with force, and that's put Williams under big pressure. Oh, from David Baker, who gets hung out to dry there on the outside, and straight on the headlight flashes as well. Yeah, it was a little bit... Um uh, robust, shall we say, from Craig was that defence, but then again, it was quite a robust move that was done on Craig uh, in from in from Hereford. Uh, if anything, I think Hereford was thinking, well, my brakes aren't good enough, so I'll use some of yours as well to get into that turn number three and uh, very much use the side of Craig Williams' car to be able to get somewhere near the apex. He, he sort of waved goodbye to the apex as he went flying by into the side of the Audi. But the Audi is uh, made of strong stuff 
and uh, certainly he's uh, putting up a formidable roadblock in front of uh, Leitner and Baker. Yeah, Norbert Leitner trying to make a move on Craig Williams, but Williams making it as difficult as possible, but Leitner has got that car on rails. That impulse racing machine looking so good. Well, tell you what, those I'm, I'm pretty sure those Pure Sims cars are are set up to be really loose at the rear. They're getting that rear to use. They get that turn in as much as they possibly can. Uh, I just noticed on our timing tower, Ross McFarlane has gained a place on flat and up to third place now for Ross, which is important for him in terms of championship points. He needs to, uh, again, limit the amount of points that uh, currently Guinez is able to pull away from him as more racing further down, Chris Chatterton, is getting really involved in the thick of it. Yeah, he is, along with his teammate Ryan Hamilton. Uh, they've certainly been in the wars tonight, that's for sure. Very busy night for that crew. Uh, as Leitner does finally get that move done on Craig Williams. And as you said, Paul McFarlane now up into the podium positions. McFarlane got his win in race one, but he could really, like you say, he could really do with finishing ahead of Guinness here as Guinness gets closer and closer in that championship chase. Certainly does, and uh, well, this is going to be uh, an intriguing final five minutes. This is this is the point of the race where your front tyres now are, are, have lost their edge. They're, they're starting to, to scream enough. You've been putting them through so much because because they're on the twenty-minute sprint races. You're really aggressive on the setup, and you really use up those front tyres um, to to try and give them give you as much grip as possible on that front end to help you through especially through these faster corners here these types of corners are a real struggle in front wheel drive cars on occasion and uh, right now these tires will be saying okay yeah i'm tapping out i've had enough but you've got enough for three and a half minutes to go to uh, to cope yeah well one driver who never taps out is watching Savidovic and he is not going to take this lying down he has rallied and is starting to pull a bit of time back into Corentin Guinness on this lap they were separated by just 12 thousandths of a second last time round but Savidovic has got a bit closer here as they come through the Vidal chicane and oh, really putting it right up onto the edge of track limits they are trying to chase down Guinness put him under pressure you can see the rear just coming around of Guinness's Hyundai Elantra and Savidovic right into the draft as best as he can get it but McFarlane's not out of it either and if Savidovic puts a big move on Guinness McFarlane will be right in there as well and right enough just a, around a tenth of a second quicker for Savidovic last time by but McFarlane two tenths of a second quicker than Savidovic yeah, he's uh, really rocking up onto this uh, this fight. The question is, has he, is it too little too late now? Because we've only got about two laps remaining in this race as uh, Craig Williams is still embroiled in this uh, in this race with the two Pure Sims cars. Esteban Rodriguez, another one who's on a recovery drive in this race. Looking to go around the outside of three, gives him the inside for four. And then will he squeeze Williams off like Williams did with... Uh, David Baker, well he did, but Williams is still there, He's still got that opportunity in the geodesic car, he's thinking, well, where do I go? Yeah, no, nowhere to go, and uh, oh, nice to go for a little sneaky move uh, up the inside there, does the triple two of Stephen Walker in the, the geodesic car, tell you what, that Audi RS3 has got some serious, serious grunt on the straight definitely more straight line speed than the Hyundai Elantra does struggle a bit more in the corners mind you but goodness me when they get into when they get through the gears that motor and that Audi's got some serious power it certainly has and uh, different gearing on the gearbox as well in the Audi compared to the rest of the cars in this field so uh, it does have its strengths it does have some weaknesses as well though unfortunately it does yeah it is you always feel you always feel you're in a gear too high when you're not with the, the Audi you really have to adjust your brain it's almost a bit like driving a diesel actually it's uh, yeah. uh, it's not a diesel but it, it feels like it, it is but uh, 
quite fitting making an Audi because they're quite good at making diesel racing cars. Anyway, uh, as we come up towards the white flag then to signal the last lap of the race, Guinness leads, but by a very slender margin indeed from watching Savinovich. And Savinovich is definitely close enough to have a thrash if he wants to. And you know he wants to. Of course he wants to. He's watching Savinovich. That's what he does. And again, pulls more than a tenth of a second out of Guinness on that last lap. So Guinness under a lot of pressure here from the ultra experience watching Savinovich. Yeah, Savinovich doing his best, but uh, it's just not quite close enough to make that move, is he? He's, because they're so similar in lap time pace, you have to be on the rear bumper to make it work and to make a move stick. He's just not quite, he's just got too much of a gap between him and the race leader to be able to make any move. So uh, he just needs to be just a little bit closer and then make a move towards the end of the lap. But it's going to be a struggle for Wojciech. Yeah, it looks like it. But we saw last time uh, Sedgwick very, very close for that win and got it, got the job done in the end over Spencer McCarthy. Can he pull off a similar heroics here on the last lap? The Vorsteiner chicane was where Sedgwick got it done. But I don't know if Sabinovich is going to be close enough to get that move. Nope, not quite. As they go through the Schumacher S up towards the Vorsteiner curb and no, Guinness has just found that little extra half a gear at just the right moment here as well. But does Savinovich have anything to say about it as they seem to have dropped McFarlane a little touch as well? Yeah, McFarlane's just dropped off a little bit off the back of these and I just don't think Savinovich is close enough here. He's three and a half tenths behind. He's not got the run heading in towards the Vidal Chicane. He needs a mistake from Guinness. He does, yeah, through the Vidal chicane. They go for the final time of this round six of the World Touring Car Series from the Nürburgring. Guinness holds on into the last corner then. So the number one, the defending champion of Corentin Guinness is going to win again in the World Touring Car Series with Wojciech Savinovich right on his wheel tracks. And Ross McFarlane gets a second podium of the night, a win and a third for the Scotsman. Andreas Gilman unsung hero of that race had all of the pro drivers swirling around him but he did not lose his nerve he comes home in fifth and serves and scores a big old chunk of points hey gregory very happy there with his day in the office in the very colorful boosted machine all these cars boosted, all the turbo charged, of course. Mike Pollard, good run for him, coming home in eighth. Craig Williams faded back to 13th there, Paul. So those last few laps were a real bruising encounter for the Audi driver. It certainly was, and uh, yeah, Williams uh, finding out the hard way just what it's like to uh, to be involved in that uh, that racing further down in this mid pack around this uh, race. So definitely, uh, Williams. Uh, I think still he'll be happy to get himself some uh, some good points here today yeah you you bet he will um so confirming then according to Guinness, a quarter of a second Bocic Savinovic coming home in second position behind Guinness and McFarlane finishing in third Terrier Flatten in fourth Andreas Gilman, your and class winner in fifth. Then it was Shillard Nagy, Spencer McCarthy, Mike Pollard, Norbert Leitner and Oyston Hereford. In 11th was David Baker with Esteban Rodriguez in 12th and Craig Williams coming home 13th. Then it was Stephen Walker, James Parker, Miguel Freitas, James Holman, Sam Lees, Yaroslav Shebula and Damon Milquin. Dan Martin was 21st, followed by Stuart Bickley, Richard Simner, Ben Gregory, Nick Clibbins, Ryan Hamilton, El Neal, Chris Chariton, Tom Stanley and Sam Smith. Then it was Nathan Davies, Slavomir Yavorsky, Hakan Ash, Rob Sutherland, Patrick Faulkner, Jamie Rushworth, Harry Fox, Alan McCain, Neil Rocks and Scott Malcolm. In the last few, Nicholas Laubich, Neil Stevenson and Jack Cedric. Well, what a day here in the World Touring Car Series, Paul. Final thoughts before we close off. 
I mean, we've seen some tremendous racing. We've seen some uh, questionable antics as well. It must be said, but uh, but certainly one of the moves of the season from Jack Sedgwick in that race to a, a really good drive through the field for Guinez as well in race number three to get plus eight positions. And uh, well, it's certainly going to be uh, interesting how this championship pans out into the second half of the series because of course we're in that's it that's the first half of the season gone yeah first half of the season is in the bag and we will continue in two weeks time 7 45 p.m british time at the wonderful suzuka circuit in japan myself and our wonderful colleague paul smith will take you all the way through that action do not miss it here on racebot tv but for now thanks so much for watching and good night